Father, thank you so much, my God, for the theme that we have in the beginning of this year, Dream Big. And Lord, this morning we lift up our senior pastors, Pastors Art and Pastor Kuna. May your hand continue to rest mightily upon them to protect them during this ministry travel. Lord, they truly are a ministry gift to the body of Christ. And we pray, my God, for supernatural wisdom, provision, favor, and blessing to be continually poured out richly upon their lives. Thank you, my God, for times of refreshing also over them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, how many of you were able to join us for prayer week starting this morning? Let me see your hands. 5.30 early this morning, whether it be the other campuses or here. Let me see again. All right. We're going to work on that this morning. Praise God. Uh, my wife and I, my son, we came to a prayer this morning. And what I usually do when I come on property is I put my stuff upstairs and I go through the admin building straight into the sanctuary. But I left my key at home. So I had my stuff and I got to the door and I had no access, so I had to put it back in the car, and I had to go around the admin building just like everybody else, and I had to wait for the volunteer to let me in through the door because I did not have my own key. Now, as a staff member, of course, I have that wonderful privilege. I have access to all our facilities, but because I did not have it with me, I could not gain access to the facility right well today this morning we're going to talk about effective prayer say effective prayer effective prayer gives us access to the promises that God says rightfully belongs to each and every one of us sometimes because we don't have access we have to go the long way around, and it takes a little bit longer to get to where we are wanting to be. And we can't enter into certain areas where we want to enter into because perhaps we need to develop effectiveness in prayer. 2016 is the year of the redeemed. And the Spirit of God has challenged us, son, daughter, dream big and dream big we shall how many of you believe that amen. amen first corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 i has not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the the things that god has prepared and made ready for those who love him so your eye has not yet seen your ear has not yet heard god's absolute best for you in 2016. Amen? We know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can dare ask or think. So God is getting ready to exceed your expectation for this year if you would continue to incubate the promises that He said rightfully belongs to you. Say, this is my year. Listen, according to the Word, there is hope for your situation. No matter what challenges you may be contending with, God has a turnaround that's been prepared and made ready just for you. Say amen. amen. For those of you that are facing overwhelming challenges, whatever they may be, sometimes in order for you to get back on your feet, you must first get down on your knees and pray. Because many times, prayer is the last thing on our list. We exhaust all our resources, all of our efforts, and then, I don't know what else to do, Pastor. Maybe you can pray for me. Because they've exhausted everything that they could possibly come up with in their mind. But what if we put prayer first? So we're talking about effective prayer this morning. Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10, the Bible says that God declares the end from the beginning. What 
Are, what have you been declaring over your 2016? What have you been declaring over this year for you personally? Because many times people have their New Year's resolution. How many of you have that? Right? Like oh, this year, you know, I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to get my finances together. Whatever it may be, you have a particular goal that you are shooting for. But sometimes, come mid-January, some people lose steam because of discouragement, and they give up, pick up their foot off of the gas pedal, and they say, well, I'm just going to go ahead and try next year. They were believing God for that special someone. They're believing God, I pray that this would be my year, that I would find that good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. But because they have not met them yet, come mid-January, well, I guess I'll have to wait the following year. <laughs> Say, this is my year. my year. Amen. So the Bible says we're to be imitators of God, and that's what God does. God speaks of the non-existent things, the things that He has foretold and promised as if, they already existed. That's called the language of faith. So be mindful of how you are speaking over your life, over your circumstances, over your situation on a regular basis. We've got to take upon a new mindset. One thing I want to encourage you is all throughout this year, rather than have having one New Year's resolution that you're shooting for by the end of this year, Break it down to 12 things. So every month, by the end of January, this is what I'm believing for. I'd like to be at this place by the end of this month. And then for the month of February, this is what I'm believing for. And I go, so on and so forth, all the way to the end of December. That way, there's always a reset and a fresh start. And you don't lose momentum and traction. And you don't allow yourself to get discouraged. Well, first, you've got to identify what are those things that you're believing God for. So take upon a new mindset, a no-quit mentality that will stop at nothing until you obtain the promise. This is the year of the re redeemed, and we will accept no defeat. So if you're believing for healing, then stand on the promises of God. Stand in the promises of God. Jonathan said it earlier, locate it in the Word of God. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, He Himself, Jesus, took our infirmities. Isaiah chapter 53, Jesus took upon our transgressions. He was bruised for our transgressions, and by His stripes we were healed. Psalm 107, verse 20, God sent forth His Word to heal thee. If you're standing you believe in God for a financial turnaround, then you've got to stand upon the promises of God's Word. My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, the Bible says, Those who are in Christ are Abraham's seed. How many of you have received Jesus into your heart? You are Abraham's seed. And the Bible says that you share in the blessing that Abraham received. What blessing did Abraham receive? God spoke to him. He says, I will bless you and I will make your name great. You will be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you. Those who are in Christ share in that promise. We are an heir together with Christ. So these are promises that we ought to be standing on, declaring, believing, speaking it over our lives. Amen? Amen? Listen, prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but laying hold of His willingness to intervene and to bless you. Because many people, they have a difficult time with that. They think, well, maybe God doesn't want me to break through. Maybe God doesn't want me to be healed. Maybe God doesn't want me to have financial turnaround. But in all reality, God desires your breakthrough more than you ever will. Because it brings glory to His name. Amen? <clears throat> Number three. 
Next thing I would like for you to understand is don't be oblivious to the opposition. Don't be oblivious to the op opposition. Daniel experienced this firsthand. You must also know that in every promise that the Lord has given you, there is an enemy who comes to see, steal, kill, and destroy. He does not want this promise to materialize in your life. And let's look at the life of Daniel. Turn with me to the book of Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. And I'll read this beginning with verse 12. An angel of the Lord spoke to Daniel saying, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day, say the first day, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. But the prince of Persia withstood me 21 days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princesses, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. In the New Living Translation, it says this, Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before God, your request has been heard in heaven. And I have come in answer to your prayer. So Daniel was praying for his breakthrough, praying for the people of the children of Israel. And it took 21 days before he received an answer. But the angel of the Lord said, Daniel, from the very moment, from the first day that you set your heart to pray and seek God, your request was heard in the realm of the Spirit. But the prince of Persia resisted me 21 days. And if you read the previous chapter, Daniel was praying and fasting for 21 days. He was praying and fasting for 21 days. And finally, there was breakthrough. And the angel of the Lord came as an answer to his prayer. Amen. Amen. If we're going to obtain our breakthrough in 2016, we're going to have to learn how to persevere in prayer. Some of you are believing, believing so big. Your dream is so big, it's like level 10 on the Richter scale. Praise God. Because that's what we want. We want to dream big. But your prayer life never goes beyond level one on the Richter scale. So you're believing God for big things, but your prayer life has been reduced to a simple mention while you're eating your food. <laughs> right? Father, I believe God that I will find the good thing. In Jesus' name, thank you for this food. Amen. Wow, you sure are going to get your breakthrough because the devil does not want you to find that good thing, <laughs> whatever it may be. Financial breakthrough, your physical healing, we're going to have to learn how to persevere in prayer. Say amen. amen. If breakthroughs and blessings were automatic, then there would be no need for the believer to pray. Now, this is what it says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, say anything. anything. Say anything. anything. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we have asked of him. Kenneth Hagin Sr. says this, Faith begins where the will of God is known. You cannot even begin to say you are walking by faith if you don't even know where it is written. You're going off of secondhand revelation of what this person said or what so-and-so said, but you have not even personally made an effort to locate the promise of God that belongs to you. 
So we're going to persevere in prayer. We're going to have to understand there's over 8,000 promises in the Bible. Find one. I'm pretty sure you open that Bible, you already found one. All you got to do is open the Bible. Praise God. Say amen. amen. <laughs> when your prayers are in perfect alignment to his will, it will not return void because you are praying his word. But in order to be effective in prayer, you must know what God's word says about your particular situation. I like what Smith Wigglesworth says, a great revivalist, a mighty evangelist. He says, I'm not moved but what, by what I see. I'm not even moved by what I feel in my physical body. I'm only moved by what I believe. This person, he only read the Bible. He wouldn't even allow magazines or newspapers to come into his house when people would come and visit him. Only the Bible. It's no wonder he developed such a conviction and a confidence in the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit operating through his life. He even went on to say, if you come to my meeting and you remain the same, that I am not God's channel. That is a man of faith. So in other words, whatever challenges that you are facing... You come bring it to the altar and there will be a turnaround because I know how to grab hold of the God in whom nothing is impossible. Come on, can somebody give Jesus a mighty hand clap? We serve a great God, amen? Turn with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. We're going Old Testament on you guys and we'll have you released for the Pro Bowl, so you can go ahead and prepare that luncheon that you've been meaning to have. First Kings chapter 18. Here God speaks to the prophet, the man of God, Elijah, and he says, Go to Ahab, for I will send the rain. There's been a drought for three and a half years, and now after three and a half years, God instructs the man of God, now I want you to go to the king and tell him, rain is coming. Rain is coming. And at that point, the prophet Elijah, he challenged all the prophets of Jezebel, called down fire from heaven, a mighty prophet of the Lord. But you know, in James chapter 5, verse 16, 17, 18, the Bible says, Elijah was just like us with emotions and feelings. But yet when he prayed, there was breakthrough. In other words, he wasn't exempt from what he felt. He wasn't exempt from what he saw. He's just like us, but he was moved by what he believed. And if the Lord said he's going to bring rain, that settled it for him. And I want to show you this right now. Isaiah, I mean, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up and eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. Now, when he said that, there was no rain. It was completely dry. He was declaring the end from the very beginning. He says, go make preparations. There is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And seven times he said, go again. Now look at this. Elijah is praying. He's praying for the rain to come. And he says, go check if the rain's there. His servant comes back, there's no rain. He sends him out seven times. Can you imagine that? You're believing God, you're praying, and he was persevering through prayer. He was fully persuaded that what God has spoken into his life was going to come to pass. We've got to come to that place. You've got to have such an intimate relationship with God that when he drops a word in your heart, 
there's just no second guessing it. It will happen. It is inevitable. It will not return void. So the seventh time, the servant came back, and he says, there is a cloud the size of a fist. Then he goes on, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot, and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. God brought about heavy rain. God wants to bring heavy rain upon your land that will produce increase in your life. But you've got to persevere in prayer. You've got to go beyond prayer mentions during your lunch break. Amen? And the perfect time to do it is this week. We have started our prayer week. Every day right here in this sanctuary from 5.30 in the morning to 7 a.m. up until Saturday. Get in an atmosphere of the miraculous. Sometimes you need, you need a jump start. Okay, I want to take my prayer life to a whole other level, but where do I begin? Well, get around people that know how to pray effectively. And I'd like to close with Colossians chapter 4. This is something that I would like for you to personally pray over yourself. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Epaphras, who is one of yourselves, a servant of Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. He is always striving for you earnestly in his prayers, pleading that you may, as persons of ripe character, and clear conviction, stand firm and mature in spiritual growth, convinced and fully assured in everything willed by God. Five key areas that you can pray over yourself. Number one, that you would be a person of ripe character. Because the Bible says, Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, faith worketh by love. We don't want to have a, ripe char a, a, a rotten character. So you can't appropriate your faith if you're not walking in love. Number two, we need to have a clear conviction, not a fuzzy conviction. In other words, you don't know what your target is. You don't know what you stand for. But when you know it is God's will to heal my physical body, then there's just no other option. But some people say, well, if it's God's will, He will heal me. Well, obviously, you do not have a clear conviction because Jesus paid a terrible price for you to be set free from every sickness and every disease. It belongs rightfully to you. All you need is the key to unlock the promise that God has already given you. Thirdly, it's going up on the screen is standing firm. You don't want to be a double-minded person because a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. So you've got to stand firm. You've got to develop a root system regarding the belief that you have created in your heart. We choose to live by faith, walk by faith and not by sight. Number four is that we would be spiritually mature in growth. Mature in spiritual growth. Unfortunately, there are many believers who've been attending church for 30 years but are still one year old in their spiritual maturity because they've never taken the time to dig in for the word for themselves. They like to be spoon-fed one spoon at a time. Jesus! <laughs> number five. What's number five? Convinced and fully assured in everything willed by God. Fully persuaded. That's what Abraham was. He said he did not consider his own body, although he was already a hundred years old. But yet God gave him a promise, you shall have a son. He did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. He was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able to perform. Pray these five things.
things over your life. And you would develop an effectiveness in prayer. Amen? And I'll close out with this statement right here. To desire breakthrough in your life and at the same time neglect a personal discipline in prayer and devotion is to wish for one thing but walk in the complete opposite direction. Did you hear what I just said? I'm going to say it again. To desire breakthrough or this particular dream or vision that you're believing God for, but yet you neglect your prayer life, your devotional life, is to wish for one thing, but you walk in the completely opposite direction. Because that Richter scale level 10 dream will not be accomplished with mentioned kind of prayers. So you can either downgrade that dream, which none of us want to do, or you can up your game in your prayer life. Amen? You all got something from this morning? Amen. Uh, let's go ahead and stand to our feet. So again, prayer is key. We want to be effective in prayer. There's a difference between praying a prayer and actually praying. You can say the right words, but yet not be effective because there's no conviction. It's not mixed with faith. So we want to help you get jump started. Get in an atmosphere where people know how to pray. Sometimes certain things are not taught. They've got to be caught in the spirit. Allow yourself to be exposed to the realm of the supernatural. You believe in God for big things? We are too, together. Let's fight the good fight of faith. And everything that I talked about, the promises that rightfully belongs to you, it first begins with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe this is your first time here, you were invited by a friend, or you just passed by and you decided to come in. If you don't have the assurance that if your life were to expire today, that heaven would be your home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. The Bible says that there is no other name given among men by which we must be saved. It's actually quite simple. All you need to do is believe with all of your heart that Jesus Christ died for the penalty of your sins and on the third day rose again. And the Bible says that when you believe that, you are saved and forgiven of every sin you've ever committed. So today, you can have a fresh start. It's still January and maybe you're not where you need to be in your walk with God. And there's a stirring within your heart and you want to recommit your life. Well, this is the time to do it. The first month of the year, God, I want to get right with you. I haven't been walking in a way that's pleasing to you and I want to. I want to start off right this year. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you saying, Pastor Wally, I want to have full assurance that I will be forgiven, that I can have a clean slate, I can have a new beginning, please pray for me. If that's you, go ahead and lift up your hands all throughout the sanctuary. You're saying, Pastor Wally, I want to have a fresh start. I want to be forgiven. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Put your hands down. Secondly, you heard what we spoke about this morning and 
there are certain areas in your life that you really need to break through. We as a church believe in the power of prayer. And we're here to pray for you. No matter what challenge you may be facing, facing maybe it's in your physical health, you need healing. The doctor's reports is saying something negative where well, we believe with God nothing is impossible. He is Christ the healer. And He will heal and He will restore. Maybe your finances look absolutely impossible to have a turnaround. Well, God can open up doors that no man can open and turn that around in a moment. So if that's you, go ahead and lift up your hands saying, Pastor, I need breakthrough. Please pray for me. I need breakthrough in my life. When you get to the place where you don't care what anybody else thinks, then you really want that breakthrough. But if you don't, then you can still live with it. It's up to you. But God will confirm His Word with signs following. This Word was presented specially just for you. Now this is what I'd like to do. For those of you that raise your hand first and foremost to receive Christ for the very first time or to recommit your life, I want you to be right here on the front of these steps. And for the rest of you that lifted up your hand and you say, I need breakthrough, please pray for me. I want you to go on this side or this side. Come quickly. Family, how about a great round of applause? Let's encourage them. Come on, this is their season. This is their moment. This is their defining moment of breakthrough and turnaround in the name of Jesus. Come on, family. A great round of applause for them. Let's cheer them on. We serve a miracle working God. With Him, nothing is impossible. In Jesus' name. Now, how many of you lifted up your hand to receive Christ and to rededicate your life for the first time? Let me just see. I, I, I don't know which one. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and pray over everyone. Family, why don't you join me in prayer? Repeat after me. Say this with all of your heart between you and our Heavenly Father. Say, Father, I humble myself right here at this altar. And I ask you, God, forgive me of all my sins. I don't want anything to hinder your best for my life. Jesus, I declare you are Lord. You are master over my life. My life belongs to you. You are my Savior. I invite you to come into my heart. Thank you, Father. Today, you've given me a new beginning, a fresh start in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to close out with a worship song. And we're going to I want you to join your faith with me and the leaders here as we pray for whatever breakthrough that they're believing God for. Can you guys do that for a couple of minutes? Because there's a corporate anointing. When you're releasing your faith in agreement for somebody's breakthrough, God will pour into you because you will reap what you sow. So stand in the gap on behalf of someone else. Amen. Can we do that? Uh, 144 leaders, if you can come forward and join me here to pray for our brothers and sisters right here. Let's begin to just worship the Lord. For those of you that are here at the altar, just close your eyes, block everything out, and just get ready to receive that breakthrough that you're believing God for. God has already orchestrated a master plan for your turnaround. All he is looking for is your faith that you would dare to believe concerning the promises that he's already given you. 144 leaders, come make your way to the front. Father, I thank you, my God, in the name of Jesus, that your presence is here to heal and to set the captives free. 
This morning as a congregation, we release our faith in agreement for breakthrough in the lives of these men and women who have come boldly before your altar. Father, with you, nothing is impossible. So we declare there is an open heaven over their lives. There is a paradigm shift taking place in the spirit world in their favor in the name of Jesus. Life group leaders, let's go ahead and pray for them right now. And let's worship the Lord.